Hello, you awesome person, you. Welcome to Weekends with What the Math. Today, we're going to be talking about some space news and also what's going to be happening on our channel this week. Let's start with the most important news of the week. Now, you may think that the most important news was the flying object, UFO, which turned out to be a Trident missile, a, um, a short uh, range missile that is used for delivering nuclear payload. And this is not even that important. You know what? I'm just going to close this window because who cares? It was just a missile test. Nothing to do with space, right? Let's talk about the space stuff. And the most important news were from NASA, of course, and it was about Martian atmosphere or specifically how Mars lost it. Now, this picture kind of summarizes it really well. Essentially, the solar flares and highly radioactive particles and uh, all kinds of sort of highly radioactive rays from sun um, stripped down the atmosphere. Uh, essentially, years after years, uh, Mars was being bombarded by the solar flares and it slowly lost all of its atmosphere. Uh, with just a little bit of carbon dioxide atmosphere left on the surface. And that's, of course, because Mars does not have a magnetic field. Okay, it does have a very, very slight magnetic field on the surface, but it's not as powerful as our planets, which is why our planet has a really strong atmosphere and Mars does not anymore now. This was a definitive finding, now we know for sure. In some more exciting news, NASA also announced that so-called EM drive, or also known as improbability drive, or basically the drive that doesn't really use any propulsion or it doesn't use any fuel, actually works. They actually tested it again and again and again, and just like the Chinese researchers a few years ago, they discovered that it seems to produce thrust. And it does so without really any theory behind it. We don't really know how it works. There's only one theory that kind of sort of tries to explain it using quantum physics. And you can read more about it in the article in the description below. But how exactly it works? Well, we still don't know. But it does seem to produce thrust and you can actually see it here. And specifically in this video right here, you can see it's producing some thrust and that's pretty exciting. I mean, it's not a lot of thrust, but that means that we can actually make an engine using nothing but uh, solar panels and essentially propel the spaceship without any fuel, which is sounds like magic, but it also sounds really awesome. So it obviously will not have a lot of thrust and you can kind of see what it might look like in the future if we actually produce one. But at the same time, it also means that we may produce a spaceship that can reach incredible speeds and possibly even uh, near solar system without really using any kind of faster than the speed of light technology. Exciting news and let's find out uh, or hopefully we'll find out in the future if this is all true. Now this is not really news but more of an article that I found online on dig.com and this is actually what like it says on top here the best space photos of the month and some of them are absolutely incredible. You really need to go through these um, by yourself and just take a look at them because some of them are so gorgeous and it, they kind of show you the more recent photos that have been taken by various telescopes and various missions as well. And look at this, this is almost like something is packed in plastic, but in fact this is Enceladus, uh, the uh, moon of Saturn that is something we're really excited about because we found liquid water underneath. Now check, out, check these pictures out in the uh, link in the description below. And lastly, we have some news from the United Kingdom. And here we're, we're talking about this company called uh, BAE Systems. This is a British defense contractor that has now officially invested $30 million in trying to finally uh, create and basically reinvent the Sabre engine. This is obviously the engine that allows you to use both um, air breathing module, just like a normal jet engine, but also at the same time use space engine uh, properties. So this would be for, for a spaceship or for a space plane that would be able to take off from, uh, from land and then essentially get into space and this is what we call a single stage to orbit, something that I've been kind of trying to make a few times in Kerbal Space Program, and one of them actually very recently made it to space. And this is actually the design they're going for, this is so-called Skylon. Now, when they'll make this, we still don't know, but um, hopefully sometime in 2020s we'll actually see a prototype that will be able to make it to space and to orbit, and then return back to Earth. And speaking of SSTOs, Kerbal Space Program video is coming up where I'm going to show you how to make one that's even more efficient than in the one in the previous week. We're also going to be talking about some mathematics of uh, planetary alignments and expect another Universe Sandbox 2 video that will try to explain some math behind it. There's also going to be a few space game reviews and of course uh, another episode of History of Spaceflight. 
And also there's going to be another series that I'm just kind of starting to work on that will teach you more things, specifically history, using another video game. I'm not going to spoil it for you yet, but let me know what you think when the video comes out. Post your comment and tell me if you liked it or not. Anyway, thank you guys for watching and game you later. I'll see you next week. More space news coming up on Sunday. Bye-bye.